Thomas Jefferson was born on April 13, 1743, at the Shadewell Plantation outside of Charlottesville, Virginia, to Peter and Jane Randolph Jefferson. Jefferson was born into the elite Virginia society. His mother was a descendant of European royalty. His father was a successful farmer, surveyor, and cartographer. He created the first accurate map of the province of Virginia. Jefferson did not have a typical childhood. He attended a private school and studied Latin and Greek. He practiced the violin and reading in his free time. When Jefferson was 14, he continued his education. He studied classical languages and mathematics with Reverend James Murray. He attended the College of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia. Jefferson became interested in law and studied under George Wythe. He was admitted to the bar in 1767. Jefferson began building his home, Monticello, in 1770. It was a large plantation where Jefferson kept 130 African Americans in slavery. In 1772, Thomas married Martha Wells Skelton, one of the wealthiest women in Virginia. They had six children together. Controversy also surrounds Thomas Jefferson. History and DNA evidence show that Jefferson had an affair producing at least one child. This affair was with his slave, Sally Hemings, who was also his wife's half-sister. Jefferson was a big player in American politics. He was very vocal about America gaining independence from Great Britain. He was elected to the Virginia House of Burgesses in 1768 and was friends with Patrick Henry and George Washington. Jefferson wrote a summary view of the rights of British America in 1774. This was his first published political paper. In 1775, Jefferson attended the Second Continental Congress. Jefferson, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Roger Sherman, and Robert Livingston were appointed to draft the Declaration of Independence. Jefferson authored the first draft of the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. From 1776 to 1779, Jefferson continued to serve in the Virginia House of Delegates. In 1777, Jefferson wrote the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom. The Virginia legislature elected Jefferson to be the second governor of the state. He had a hard time as Virginia governor. He was torn between supplying the Continental Army for the American Revolution and keeping Virginia protected. He moved the capital of Virginia to Richmond and then had to flee the capital because it was targeted by the British Navy. He also had to flee his home in Monticello as the British were en route to capture him and other high-ranking officials. He left the office of governor on June 4, 1781 and said he was done with the public life. That did not last. While retired, he wrote a book, Notes of the State of Virginia. Jefferson's views on slavery were controversial. His entire livelihood depended on slavery, and he thought white people were superior to black people. He also wrote that slavery was a violation of the natural rights of man. Jefferson's wife Martha died on September 6, 1782, at the age of 34. This was unexpected, and after mourning her death, Jefferson stepped back into politics. He led the Virginia delegation to the Confederation Congress in June of 1783. The next year, he replaced Benjamin Franklin as the U.S. Minister of France. George Washington appointed Jefferson to be his Secretary of State in 1789, making Jefferson the first Secretary of State of the United States of America. He resigned from his position and returned to his home, but again, it wouldn't last. Jefferson led the Republican political party and supported strong state governments. Jefferson was nominated by the Republican Party to run for president in 1797. He didn't campaign, which presidents didn't at the time. He ended up losing to John Adams and finishing second, but by rule, that made him the vice president. The presidential election between Thomas Jefferson and Aaron Burr ended in a tie. 73 electoral college votes. The House of Representatives selected Jefferson, making him the third president of the United States. During his inaugural speech, Jefferson said, Every difference of opinion is not a difference of principle. Jefferson had a successful first term as president. He lowered the debt. He reduced the size of the armed forces and federal government. 
he completed the Louisiana Purchase for $17 million, doubling the size of the nation. The Lewis and Clark Expedition took place. He also ended the Barbary War by dealing with the Tripoli Pirates. He won re-election in 1804, but his second term was not as successful. America was caught in the middle of Great Britain and France. Trade was difficult with both, so Jefferson passed the Embargo Act of 1807, banning trade with Europe. This caused America's economy to crash. After his presidency, Jefferson finally retired from politics and spent his time at Monticello. He helped design and found the University of Virginia, and due to financial strains, he sold his library to the Library of Congress. Jefferson died on July 4, 1826, on the 50th anniversary of American independence. He is buried in Monticello. I hope you've enjoyed learning about Thomas Jefferson. He was a founding father of the United States of America. He held many offices of importance and was the third president. What is his connection to Kentucky? In 1780, while Thomas Jefferson was the governor of Virginia, Jefferson County, one of the three original counties of Kentucky, was named after Thomas Jefferson. Don't forget to try out audibletrial.com slash kyhistorypod to get a free book of your choosing. If you'd like to support the channel, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification button for more Kentucky history content. Find us on these social media platforms and check out the Kentucky History Podcast on these podcast platforms for more in-depth history of Kentucky. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.